Time's out. Trainers, you're out of here. Unless you need one. Do you need a hot pack or anything? You're good. Uh, I'm good right now. We got players only right You've now. You've got a, a vicious rival coming on with us back in my day. You know that, right? Yeah, I know, but it wasn't my rival. That's why we got him on here. I, I, got, I was a devil in it. I'm one I, of those turncoats. It's I weird. have to say, I We got Mike Richter. I consider him a friend now, oh, which is be. nuts. I don't know how I'm doing that. I, you know, couldn't stand him. <laughs> Not him personally, but the rivalries. Isn't that what it's about, Ricky? That's what it's about. There's no question <laughs> about it. But, uh, yeah, I, I, I try to tell people to keep it quiet. You're a great guy, but I don't let that out of this room. Don't tell anybody. <laughs> Obviously, you had just such a wonderful career with, with the Rangers, with USA Hockey. What are you up to right now? What are you doing lately? Um, well, you, you did catch me at the office. I, I've got a small company called Brightcore, and we're right outside New York City, and we do energy efficiency for commercial buildings. And it's cool, man. I, I've always been kind of interested in, in the environment and energy in particular. And, you know, I'm not an engineer. I'm not a financial guy. So it, part of the team's job here is to figure out what I do. <laughs> Um, but no, mostly business development. And I really am surrounded by, as you guys know, we've been on teams all of our lives and it's just, it's a different team and you stay in your lane and let the people work their expertise where they uh, have it. And, uh, you do your job. Love it. So Mike, all kidding aside, we talk about rivalries and we had some of the best rivalries, Devils Rangers during our time in the nineties. But I want to say this with sincerity, and this is coming from a devil. You, no question in my mind, should be in the Hall of Fame, and I'm not trying to fill your head, but just that performance alone, you had many other great performances. You went on to win the Cup in 94 after that epic series against us in the Eastern Conference Finals in, in Game 7. But it, it just to me, the that series alone, watching you perform, you still don't get enough credit because that was an incredible series that... Uh, you are outstanding, and, and I'm a believer, man. You should be in the Hall of Fame. Well, it, it is nice, but, you know, I read a really cool thing about, um, uh, and I appreciate the words, you know, um, you know your, 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 your rival and, and your opponent in any sport is kind of like your most important person uh, or group, right? That wouldn't have been fun unless the Devils were as good as you guys were. And that, that's what makes any series great. You know, uh, we were talking just a little bit before we went on the air about possibly BU, BC playing in the finals. Uh, you know, I've, when you're watching great games and it's always bitter to to lose any game, but a really great series like we happen to be at, like you want to win, but you also want to be challenged like that. And uh, that's where, you know, come on, look down your lineup, Marty Bedore, all these guys. Scott Stevens, uh, it, it was just such a great group of professionals that we had and that you had. And, and you know, we're all fans. You want to be part of that. So I, I really do look back and it sounds pretty, I don't know, like you're full of it. But I'm thankful that we had such a good, incredible battle, you know, seven games, double OT twice. Um, it had everything, you know, the physicality, the skill, the the defense, the offense. And um you know, if you just happen to play an opponent that is off their game or sick or has somebody suspended and they're just not at their at 100 percent, well, you still win, but it's not the same kind of epic mm. struggle. And we we're lucky enough to both be in that. Agreed. Well, talking about rivalries and you mentioned BCBU. Let's bring it to the college landscape here. You went to Wisconsin. They broke my heart in 2006, unfortunately. That was like a home game for them. Dan, we go to, as Boston College, we go play in the national title game against Wisconsin. Guess where we played? In Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Kind of unfair, but anyway. Oh. <laughs> yeah. By the way, I was at Leachy's house watching that, and it was all fun oh. and games until suddenly it's like, I had 30 BC guys here, and I'm the only one smiling. It's getting a little uncomfortable. <laughs> so. We almost tied it up at the end, but... Unfortunately for us, Two it was great nice being hockey there. programs. Yeah, it's wonderful. It's and and you had you know a great career at Wisconsin, so great so that Mike Richter Award is is named for the best goalie. I mean, when did that come about? How did and talk a little bit about your college career as well, if you'd like. But how did that all come together? Well, I can sum up my uh, college career short and kind of nondescript. Uh, I, I loved it. I loved Wisconsin. Um, my roommate there was Tony Granado, and just. You know, he had played with my brother prior to that. He's a couple of years older than I. And, you know, going on campus and seeing those places, look, there's so many good places to play, even more so now. 
and we had a we had a talented team. We had some great great players that came out of there. And uh, in some ways, it goes too fast. I was there two years, and it you know it, it was phenomenal. Great coaching, great teammates, great place to live. Um, but it's over so fast. You know, you're trying to get to the next level, and I think it's really hard for anybody who plays. Um, I'm watching some of my my sons play Division One hockey, and some of their teammates have signed on now, and um, that's what your goal is. You know, we're all players, whether you're in juniors or college, and all you want to do is get to the pros, and then all you want to do is start winning games and then winning championships. And uh, I love my time there, but um, in some ways, I look back and I said, "Man, it went too quick." You know, two years in, in and out. Ricky, after your career, you went on to Yale and. And got your degree in ethics, politics, and that's where I want to go. I had heard, and I've never asked you personally, we see each other at charity events and, yep. and hang out and reminisce about, <clears throat> excuse me, the, the great rivalry, and we have such respect mm -hmm. for each other now as far as teammates or teams and the players uh, that faced each other. But we're, <clears throat> I got a little frog, excuse me, in my throat. That's why I know I always choke you up, Dan. Oh, I know. <clears throat> you do, choke. excuse me, but... <laughs> Was there a time that you were thinking going into politics? I had heard that, or, or it interested you. You're a smart yeah. guy. Uh, is that still something on your radar? And excuse me for my my little yeah, talk. Sure. Um, I actually I did, and, and I think my wife would have killed me for it because you know, as an athlete, you're pretty self-involved, and you have to be. You're you're getting ready for games, and I I took it pretty seriously. My prep, and uh, you're in your own little world. And I was just starting to have young kids, and I, the timing wasn't right. But look. My dad served in World War II, uh, left college to, to serve in Asia, um, and, um, you know, there's sacrifices you make, and I love the idea of some kind of, um, you know, public service, and that could come in many forms, and mm -hmm. the timing wasn't right, uh, but maybe sometime, who knows, um, I, I, I mean I, I mean that, I, I don't know, I, the rest of my family has no interest in it, and, but I always thought it was kind of a cool thing to do. Um, but uh, I'm happy doing what I'm doing now. And, you know, we're, we're still all fans. I watch you guys all the time. I watch every game I can and go to as many as I can. Um, it's hard to fill, as you guys know, that void that happens when you ultimately retire. It's, it's a really uh, big hole in your life. Mike, we have uh, – that's incredible. I actually didn't know any of that. That's fantastic. And we, we were – you know, Dano is filling in today for Corey Schneider, who is a goalie. Uh, yeah. We got Schneider's right here, his bobblehead. <laughs> Uh, he's sick, unfortunately. His whole family is sick, so we're thinking. Maybe oh, I'm wow. getting it a little bit with that frog I just had for a second. Keep more no, I'm good. I'm good. So I got to ask a goalie question, even though I'm 100% not in the goalie union now. It's I grew up, and my older brother loved the Rangers. He, he had gone down to a game. I was probably eight or nine, and he just loved the Rangers. So we we followed the Rangers quite a bit, and you were the star. And then you know, yet you, you pass the torch, and it's it's Hanky. All of a sudden, he's the star for a long time. Now you have Igor. It's so unique, but it's so awesome. Do you get a? Do you have a relationship with those two? I mean, maybe not yet with Igor. He's kind of in the beginning stages of it, but especially with Hanky, who I know so well. Do you yep. guys share that same bond of doing the same job for the same club? So cool. I mean, really, uh, Rangers have had a really interesting history of goaltenders. You know, from from JD even, right? I mean, you yeah. have so many interesting guys that have been in that crease in, in Madison Square and. Just small things, you know. Um, when I came there, Eddie Jockman had worn number one. I started wearing number one. One day I got a tap on the shoulder and go, hey, you need a new number. I'm like, what? He's <laughs> like, it's going upstairs, babe. And I'm like, I, I don't understand. He's like, they're retiring that number. So, you know, I just kind of happened to pick 35, which oddly enough, I had been one all my life. And I was kind of honored to wear one before Eddie took it up to the rafters. And then I wear 35. Hank comes in. He wore 35 his whole career. And now he has to wear 30. Now, you know, mine goes up to the rafters. Hank's goes up to the rafters. Pretty cool stuff. But I think it says something at this point uh, in the Rangers organization to have a guy like Henrik Lundqvist, um, who is such a professional, you know, retire, and then you fill it with Shusterkin. Um, You know, they're they're doing something right, and they're scouting there. This kid mm. – is amazing and and he reads the puck so the play so well everybody's different everybody has different strengths and you all you know i grew up watching bernie perrant you emulate him a bunch you know i was lucky enough to grow up in philadelphia and he was just supremely talented and cool french canadian um but i can't be bernie i got to be myself you know i got to take what i can from him and 
you know, the young guys watching, you know, your teammate, Marty Bredor or, or Hank, they, you know, you got to put your own stamp on your stuff and learn what you can. And Shesterkin certainly has his own way of playing and approach, but he's a brilliant goalie. Now you look at that one, two punch that they have there uh, with Jonathan Quick and, you know, he just surpassed uh, uh, Miller for number one on the U S goalies list. I mean, it's pretty cool. So, um, yeah, I, I'm I'm a fan, and I really appreciate the professionalism and the excellence that they bring to that to that position. That's awesome. I I expected that. That's fantastic to hear, um, Mike. We're going to switch over to the the other segment. We were talking about what were you thinking? We got some <laughs> photos for you. <laughs> sure. Uh, honest answers only. <laughs> what? <laughs> Uh, I was thinking that my head was harder than it actually is. Um, that was in that was in Quebec, and I, I lost the mask. I kind of got pinched between two guys, and I think you'd see the helmet behind me under my blocker. <laughs> I, I wasn't thinking. I was looking. There was a shot coming from the point. I thought, I don't even know if the ref's going to blow the whistle, and you sort of – it popped off my head so quick. I just kept playing, and the ref took his dime, and, and anyway, it blew the whistle, and the puck never really made it to the net. But I, I think at that time, you, you, you're kind of locked in, so you don't – you don't think about it unless there's a big struggle every once in a while someone's waving to the ref, but play. You're just playing on, game on. Love Ricky, that. back Stop in our puck. back in our day, they didn't blow the whistle too quick. Uh, helmets off, oh. your mask off. They're saying, keep it going. <laughs> Hockey. If he gets one off, rings one off the, yeah. the He won't know the head, difference. It's okay. <laughs> but no. And they protect players a little better nowadays. That's yeah. all I'm saying. So shots are coming a little quicker now too, right? Yeah, though, for sure. And the technology, you know, let alone with the sticks. But so I want to know what you were thinking on this uh, incredible save. And I remember it well because I was ninety four and that's yeah. the finals on one of the great scorers, Pavel Burry. Well, the, the funny part about this was right beforehand, I got uh, Essa taken in, and you know him well. He's in my ear going, you know, he's very fast. I'm like, thanks. <laughs> he, never heard of this guy as a rookie. Um, <laughs> geez. But afterwards, J.D. had said, you know, were you thinking the same thing? Because he had a similar forehand deke like that in the All-Star game in New York. Yes. And uh, I hadn't. And thank God I hadn't even, <laughs> you know, just didn't come in across my mind. But you better play. You've played with so many great players, both you guys. You play a great player with all the – got to play him honestly, right? He's going to end up doing what you give him. And uh, Pav had scored in that series between my legs on a shot. He'd gone backhand once. Um, he's got an arsenal. And, like, you know, you think I've got a guy like Lemieux or Bure or, you know, Panarin on the Rangers now. If I start – predicting what he's going to do it's a guess and uh i'll end up on the wrong side of that equation so i just tried to play him honest i knew he had speed i was able to match it coming back and then you run out of real estate and eventually he's going to either put it through your legs or try to get it over you but i was tight on him there and that was the that was the general goal um but you know he was such a gifted scorer man that's the thing everybody you know talks about that picture right there but pav had scored plenty in that series believe me I can't. I mean, I was dying to hear about your thoughts on the All Star move because, as a shooter, I I'd be like, he remembers, he remembers. I'm going to go right back to the well <laughs> because yeah. he's he's not going to think I'm going to do it again. I'm going to mix because it right. didn't work. But you know, that's identical. Oh, yeah, that's a dirty move. little secret. You know, we 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 try to have a short memory with uh, as a goalie, and, and maybe I took that too far. Well, is there is there because uh, that's that photo was on Sports Illustrated, was it not? Yeah, yeah. You got yeah. a few copies cool of those moment. still. Yeah, it was a cool moment because there was less, you know, there wasn't a shootout after the games like there is now. And you just didn't see as many um, penalty shots. And that one happened, uh, you know, in the Stanley Cup final. So it's a little bit of a rarity. And um, I think Pav was also at the end of a shift. Do you see him prior to that? He's kind of talking to the ref and he's like, hey, how about the weather? You know, he's just trying to get his win back, you know, and uh there was a lot of pressure on him. He would been, you know, such a huge part of their success and people relied on him just like, Oh, it's an automatic. So, you know, being in their home, their home building, I think there was a big expectation on, on him. He, he, he had a lot of pressure on him. So in a way I had a little advantage. Oh, that's unreal. Uh, next is something that I, I'll ask anybody this, as long as they'll, they'll answer it for me because I didn't have the opportunity to do this. What was this feeling like? What were you thinking here? You know, it's, it's, Every year as a player, you have a goal to win the championship. And and Danny, you know, I mean, how many times do you get to say, I won my last game, you know? Mm-hmm. We did exactly what we set out to do. This is what I, I, I my whole career is revolving around. And so there's just, 
I have pretty good imagination. I've been thinking about that a lot, but nothing matched it because, you know, there is no tomorrow. There's no, I wish I could have. I wish, oh, we came close. Boy, we grew this year as an organization. Nope. We did what we set out to do and that's what you're paid to do. And that's all you can think about. You know, we all play and this is what we pretend to do in the driveway and the seventh game OT and all that kind of stuff. And I just, you know, I'd never experienced that. And, and Kenny, when you guys won the next year, then you go on to win more, you know, all that does is motivate you for the next year. Like, okay, we know how to do it as an organization. I know how to do it as a player. You, th- you think of the, you know, Islanders with their, that was probably the, you know, the dynasty that I grew up watching because they beat Philly in 80 to, to start that whole run. And um, we all saw Edmonton and you just think, okay, we know how to do it. But man, it's a fleeting thing and great players never get a chance to sniff it sometimes. So, mm. you know, I was so upset the next year, um, bouncing out of the playoffs and, and and not getting it together and winning it again. But then you look back in your career and you go, wow, you know, I'm pretty fortunate to have the great team that I had around me and things worked. We, we were healthy, which is a huge component of it for any team. And um, But what I was thinking at that moment was, oh, my God, you know, this is everything that you dreamed of and better. Yeah, words can't describe anybody that's won the Stanley Cup or been fortunate enough. That cliche, mm-hmm. you hear it. It's so cliche, yeah. yeah right. I, I remember Billy Guerin when first year one as a young kid, and he couldn't get anything out. He was yeah. on TV, and I'm like, that that kind of sums it up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, what was that great commercial the NHL yeah. had? And it showed, you know, Billy yes. Ranford, and, and they all kind of were just speechless. And, and you, you look at each other, what, what do you do? You know, you've been – How are you supposed to respond? Yeah, it's, it's like there is no tomorrow, man. This is it. And it, it is one hell of a feeling. And then I think, you know, you're, you're doing it for the guys in the locker room, but then you realize how how big it is for, for the fans that have been with you through thick and thin. And I, I love that one moment with, with Mess, you know, he came over to the to the boards with the cup and just, you know, everybody was touching it. And, and that's yeah. a, you know, this is for you, New York. That that was a really kind of meaningful thing. So, yeah, it was, it was mind-blowing. Um, Hard, hard to describe, I got to tell you. Not real. Good stuff, good stuff. Then man. you go from winning for your city and your teammates then then winning something for your country. <laughs> yeah. yeah, what a cool thing. I mean, you guys know that team and you know how funny Billy Guerin is and, and Kachuk. And, and I mean, they just, from the get-go, you know, you're tired. You had a long year and you start, you know, skating again earlier than normal. And we hop into a pretty intense training camp. And I can remember we're up in Providence, Rhode Island, you know, and watching the Canadian team out in like, uh, I don't know, Whistler and playing golf. And there we are, you know, <laughs> walking around the streets of Providence. And, uh, but it became such a tight team. Those guys, Billy Garen would put in the fake teeth and sitting there yelling at everybody at dinner. And <laughs> all we, all we did was laugh. I mean, I got to tell you, it was one of the tightest teams I've ever been on and so much fun. Um, every, every moment of that event was just an adventure. And, and, and what's cool about it is sometimes those international competitions clearly have great teams assembled and great individual players, but it felt like we took about three practices. And I remember Brett Hull going, Holy smokes. Like the puck was whizzing in that practice. There was some real talent. And, um, on that very first one. And it seemed like we got into mid-season form very fast and the games were great. You know, we played the Russians uh, a couple of times and um, I just felt like the quality of, of the play, given that it was late summer, basically, um, and everybody's coming into training camp, turned pretty intense really well. And then you had these great games, you know, really some mean stuff, uh, Adam Foote and, and, and mm-hmm. Chuck and, and, and Lindros. There was a lot of kind of hatred there that, you know, we all – play with and against these guys and know each other and so it, it got intense very very fast and the quality of play was great so again what a fun thing to be part of and ricky was mvp of that 96 MVP, world MVP. cup pretty impressive man oh incredible fun stuff oh yeah. uh, mike thank you so much man thank you so much for your time and and your breakdowns your answers everything it was um, for me it was that was a Love thrill, what you guys really. do. I'm sorry Corey's sick, and sorry we had to bounce Catherine. Right. Glad she's coming back for, for me. Um, but great stuff, guys. Thanks for having me.